Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So what I have here in my hand is the world's smallest web server. Are you intrigued? Let me explain. Okay, so what I have here is an Arduino MKR1000, which is a microcontroller board, an Arduino microcontroller board with a built-in Wi-Fi module. That means as a microcontroller, it can access your local network and of course it can access the internet. It can send files up to the internet, it can download files from the internet, it can get the current time, it can log different things that are going on. And so what I want to do today is look at how you can use the uh, Arduino MK1000 with its internet capabilities, with its Wi-Fi capabilities, so that we can see what's possible using a very, very small connected uh, microcontroller board. So a quick rundown of Arduino, it's a complete ecosystem, that means it's the hardware and the software for you to develop projects using a microcontroller. So it's open source in the sense that all of the circuit boards that are made by Arduino, are all the schematics are available so that you can then make your own boards or incorporate them into your own projects. There's also an IDE which includes a compiler and a way of uploading your software onto the flash memory of the microcontroller. Now the boards come in variety of different sizes and capabilities and price points. Some of them use the AVR 8-bit microcontrollers which run around 8 or maybe 16 megahertz. And some of them use the ARM Cortex microcontrollers which generally run faster, they're 32 bits for example. And this one, it runs at 48 megahertz, ARM Cortex M0 plus running at 48 megahertz. So when you have a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller that means you can do a project and then that project has online connectivity and it's simpler than let's say bluetooth connectivity because you don't need an app or some kind of gateway to talk to the device and then relay that information you know further up onto the internet or, or whatever if you've got a wi-fi connected one you can just open up a web browser which is why i called this the world's smallest web server and what i want to show you is how you can use the uh, mk1000 to make a web server on your microcontroller, then you can connect it with your web browser, and then you are able to do things, interrogate it, you can send it commands, whatever. So for example, let's say you build a project to water your tree in your lounge uh, when the water's too low. If it's Wi-Fi enabled, you can connect it with the Wi-Fi browser, with a normal browser, and then you can see what the current status is. Maybe you can say, add extra water now, don't do watering for the next 24 hours. You can build your own system, it's up to you, but it's really easy to get to because you can get to it from any online device, from your laptop, from your PC, from your smartphone, from a tablet, whatever, and you can talk to it. So what we do is we go over to my desktop and we're gonna see downloading, where you download the IDE from, and then we're gonna write some simple programs, including a web server and including a program that goes and gets the current date and time off the internet, and then that can set the real-time clock here on the board, things like that. So let's go over to the desktop and have a play. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is go over to the Arduino website, and here is the main page here. Go to Software, Downloads, and then scroll down here to the uh, Arduino IDE, Integrated Development Environment. At the moment of making this video, it's 1.8.10. Download it for your operating system. We've got Windows, Mac OS, and Linux covered here. And that will give you an IDE which can you can write code in it and actually compile it and download it directly onto your Arduino, which you will have connected via a USB cable. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and I've got opened up the Blink program, which is basically kind of the equivalent of Ho Hello World in the kind of uh, embedded electronics world, because it will flash an LED on and off, and you find that by going to File, Examples, they've got loads of examples here, Look, absolutely loads of them, Basics, and then Blink, and that will bring up this sketch, which is basically a C program for the Arduino, and there are two important things. One is there is a setup function that gets called once, at the very beginning when the program is run. And in this case, all that does is tell us which pin is gonna be set up for doing the LEDs and the fact that it's an output pin because you're turning an LED on and off as an output. And the second function is called loop and this goes round and round and round and round forever. So it's always called all the time. And as you can see, all we do is say, turn the LED pin on, make it high, then wait one second, then turn it low, which means turn it off, then wait one second, it goes round in a loop, and it will just keep doing that. So if you now go up here, you can either verify, which will just compile it, 
or you can compile it and upload it. And when you click that, you can see down here in the bottom, it's telling you that it's compiling the program, it's resetting the CPU, it's downloading it onto the Arduino. And once that's done, you can see, here we go, a flashing LED. Now that program will basically work on any Arduino, but we're using the MKR1000, which is a special Arduino which has Wi-Fi built into it. You can also do this with other Arduinos and then adding Wi-Fi as a shield, kind of plugs into the pins there on top. And here is an example Wi-Fi web server. And I want to just go through this quickly and then show it running. So first of all, at the very top, we define what our uh, SSID and password are, and they're defining this other file here, Arduino Secrets, so you don't have to have it in your main code, which you maybe you'll publish on GitHub or wherever you want to put it. Then remember the setup function, here it is, set up again, bit bigger in this case. What does it do? First of all, it sets up a serial port for debugging, and we're gonna use that in a minute. So that USB cable not only provides power, you're not only use it for programming, it actually enables you to uh, see some output from the program which you can read. It then checks that Wi-Fi is available, which of course it is in this case because it's built in. And then if it's not connected, it actually just says uh, Wi-Fi.begin, passing in the SSID and the password. So it connects to your Wi-Fi network. Then once that's done, it starts up a server which will listen on port 80. Look, the 80 is defined there in this server object. And then it will print out the Wi-Fi status and we'll see that in a moment when we run the program. Then if you remember, there's the other one called loop. So here is a loop function, a bit bigger this time than it was before when we were just flashing that LED on and off. What does it do? Basically, it says, if there is a connection, if it has connected, go around in a while loop while there is still a connection. If there are characters available to be read, if something has been sent to our server, then read them one at a time, print them out onto our serial port so that we can read them. And then basically it's gonna go through and wait until it finds a blank line. And that's the important thing with HTTP requests, you get a blank line and that tells you that it is the end of the uh, request. And then once it's done that, it says, well, let's put out a response. So this is how HTTP is formatted. It sends out a header again with a blank line here in between it. And then it sends out the HTML document, which in this case will say, welcome to the world's smallest web server. Thanks for visiting. And then it will print out here the strength of the Wi-Fi signal, signal strength here, and it gets that data from the Wi-Fi object. And that's it. It just sits there. Every time a request comes in, it sends back the same page, giving you the uh, strength of the Wi-Fi signal, and that's it. So let's also do the same thing. Let's hit the compile and upload button. That will now compile this sketch, which is really a kind of a simplified C program, and then it will get downloaded onto the board, and then we can fire up a web browser and see it actually working. So here we are connected to the serial monitor, it's telling us it's attempting to connect to the Wi-Fi network, and that takes about 10 seconds, there's a delay in there waiting for all that to happen, takes 10 seconds, and then when it's done, it will tell us that it's connected, and it's given us an IP address, there we go, 192.168. 1.75. So over here now on the web browser, we can type that in and hit the load. Now two things happen at once. So I've got the right hand side. First of all, it said, look, here is a new request that's come in. And this is the request that has come in. And it's seen that request, seen the blank line, which we can see here. And then it's replied with that HTML that we saw in the code. Here it is. Welcome to the world's smallest web server. Thanks for visiting. And then the signal strength, which it got from the Wi-Fi module. And that's it. So the, it said here the client had connected and disconnected. And if we hit the refresh button, it will do it again. And you can see there that another request came in and now a different uh, uh, HTML was replied. This time the strength has just changed there now, minus 60, I think it was minus 61 before. So we can see that that's working all the time. And so really this is a great way of getting a, a microcontroller. You can connect sensors to this, you can connect all kinds of things. And you now have a way of controlling it over a web, maybe reading about the status, maybe you can send it commands to do things all over the web, which is a great way of controlling your uh, little uh, Arduino board. Now, if you want to see more about controlling things and reading sensors, do let me know in the comments below and I'll make a follow-up video where we maybe read some temperatures or some pressures or something like that. We'll see what we do to make kind of this web interaction a bit more interesting. But one more thing I wanted to mention, that is that the MKR1000 has a built-in real-time clock. Now, of course, when it starts up, it doesn't know the time unless you have a battery model, the module that keeps it kind of going. But if you just have it plugged in and it comes up, it doesn't know the time. But of course, we get to the internet now, we can go out onto the internet, get the time, and then 
uh, set the real time clock. So I'm going to show you another sketch here. This is a very similar sketch to the one we've got, except for there's a couple of other things that we've added in. First of all, we are now also using UDP because UDP is how we're going to get the uh, time using the network uh, uh, time protocol. And we're also initializing the uh, real time clock. And you'll see down here a bit, for example, here it is. There is the port for listening for the UDP packets. OK, and we're setting up a time server there and that is time.nist.gov so that's one of the standard uh, NTP servers out there on the internet we kind of set that up here and also we have initialized our real-time clock now in the setup function here everything is very similar except for we also here start the connection to go and get the um, the real-time clock uh, and what and we also call a function which was format the packet, send it raw over the internet to that address and get the data back. And then we will uh, set the clock. And here we initialize the real time clock there. So if we go into our uh, functions down here, we'll leave the loop for a moment. If we go down here a bit further, here it is, get NTP time that calls send NTP packet, which basically formats here manually. Look at that, the nice, all the numbers that it needs to format that properly formatted request for NTP. When that comes back, it reads it here, parses the packet, and then starts to look inside of it and says, oh yes, this is the uh, the time. And we'll see all these prints coming out in the console in a minute. And finally, at the very end, once you've got the time, it says, well, let's set the time. Now we only do this once at boot up. And the advantage of that means that now because the real time clock is running it means that we are able always to have the right time which is great for logging great for showing uh, so you know when something happened you don't have to say well when did that happen well actually it's in the real time clock here and our our main loop is basically the same except for a bit of a difference here we also add at the end here now some html to show the time in utc time because that's what it comes in over ntp which means that will change every time we update the web page so again we're now going to run this and upload it onto arduino now, one thing to remember is that both of these example codes I will leave in my GitHub repository so that you can have a look at them and play with them yourself without having to stare at the video to wondering what the code actually is. OK, let's go over to the debugging here now. And so again, we can see here attempting to connect to the Wi-Fi network. As before, that takes a few moments as it connects up to the network. And then it will go off and ask for the time from that server using UDP. Now we go, there it is. So it's received a packet, look at that packet received. And then it gives you the time here. Now it says this is the time which is right at the moment where I'm making this video, that is the right time. And now here, if we refresh our page, as you can see now at the bottom here, we now have the time displayed. And every time we refresh that, there will be a different time. It won't be asking again for the time over the internet, but the real time clock is keeping a track of the time. And there you go, it's gone up now to 13.22 and 13 seconds. So there you can see it. Uh, the real time clock is functioning, Wi-Fi is functioning, and you can actually do things on the internet and things locally, all controlling this very, very tiny uh, Arduino board. So there you go, the world's tiniest web server. Okay, so there you have it, the MKR1000. So a very nifty little device because it's a microcontroller, low power, you can run this from a battery, but at the same time, of course, it is Wi-Fi enabled, so you can connect to your local network and to the internet. And I've got lots of videos planned around the Arduino. I showed a picture of this on Instagram connected to an LCD display and asked people whether that would be interested and people said yes. So I'll do a follow up video about how you connect this to that LCD display. I also want to compare this with the Raspberry Pi Zero because Arduino versus Raspberry Pi is an interesting conversation. What are the pros and cons of the different uh, setups there? And I've actually got quite a lot of uh, things going on here in my head about different uh, microcontroller videos that I want to do. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. If any of that stuff has interested you, please do give this video a thumbs up. Also, if some of those future things I want to do are of interest to you, then why not subscribe and hang around to see what other videos I make. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Actually, I've just thought, since this is the internet, there's going to be someone somewhere who's going to look at the dimensions of this board and try to find a different board to see which is slightly smaller. Okay, it's inevitable. Go at it.